There's a great deal of technology testing to be done during the coming years if Open RAN is to become a viable option for all types of wireless network operators. And one of the organizations involved in testing all manner of disaggregated networking elements and combinations is the I-14Y Lab in Berlin. And to find out more, I'm talking today with Andreas Gladisch, VP of Emerging Technologies at Deutsche Telekom's Group Technology Function and consortium lead of the I-14Y Lab. So uh, Andreas, good to see you again. Thanks very much for joining us. So can you tell us about the I-14Y Lab? Uh, what are its goals and who is involved? The I-14Y Lab is a consortium of partners who are interested to drive the ecosystem of Open RAN. So we have three partners from the operator side, which is Telefonica Germany, Vodafone Germany, and Deutsche Telekom. There are partners from the industry, Capgemini, Nokia, and Rode and Schwarz. So they provide system integration capabilities, RAN systems, and test systems for sure. So then we are proud to work with small and medium enterprises, EINTC for uh, they bring a, a lot of experience in testing, BISDN, they work more on the automation of our lab, and High Street, who are experts in uh, developing SM, uh, SMOs, so these orchestrators. And finally, we work with academic partners, Technical University of Berlin and Fraunhofer Institute, Heinrich Herz Institute here in Berlin, and they create the link between the industry and the academic side. So from that perspective, we have a good group of partners really representing different interests in the ecosystem, but with the common interest to drive the ecosystem. What is our goal? So our goal is to make testing simpler, easier, to lower the market entry barrier for smaller companies and even to bring uh, open run components closer to the level of uh, of a real product so that the operators can introduce those products later. So in that sense, we also work with Telecom Infra Project and the Oran Alliance to develop badges and certificates so that uh, the introduction of the technology will become easier later. Okay, excellent. Um... So what lessons do you think have been learned so far from I-14Y's activities and programs? Oh, that's a good question. So uh, the project started two and two, almost two years ago, and we, we started with initiatives dealing with uh, the PlugFest and setting up all those PlugFests. And one learning is these PlugFests are great, for sure, and it helps the, the industry that, that the different partners come together. On the other hand, uh, this event-driven solution and this event-driven approach is just the first step. So we really want to bring it forward to kind of regular testing, so that we, we means the operators agree on reference configurations and scenarios that are most important for the operators that we implement these uh, scenarios as regular test setup so that we easily can change components and test components. So that is the learning, make it uh, more relevant for the industry and step out of the uh, event-driven plugfests. On the other hand, those plugfests are important, don't get me wrong, but, but we need to come closer to, to products here. First learning. The second learning is it is more difficult than expected. So there are so many players and there's a high complexity behind the open run. So therefore, a couple of things took much longer than expected and we had to change our plans, but uh, we're still on track concerning the regular testing and uh, the reference configurations. Okay, uh, interesting. Uh, and, and yes, we're hearing the same kind of thing. Uh, from from different parts of the industry, it's it's a new area, so it's always going to be a little bit uh, tougher to to set things up to start. Um, so so right now in 2023, uh, what is the main focus for interoperability testing right now, and, and why is that the case? Mm, so you might be aware there is currently 
the uh, Spring Plugfest running also in, in our lab here in I-14Y. And we open up uh, a new area, or at least we grow a lot in the area of rig testing so that we can combine different rig uh, setups with uh, X apps, R apps. And that is a growing area. And it is also, uh, I would say, new when it comes to uh, the different combinations we currently uh, are setting up and testing. On the other hand, uh, we still continue with IUDU conformance testing. And uh, we have also implemented a new end-to-end -end test scenario. And uh, so that is also important that we'll continue, especially this this these end-to-end -end solutions. Good to hear that uh, things are moving on with the uh, the, the RIC-based testing as well, because there's, there's clearly a lot of interest in what this might deliver to the industry in the future. Um, now, is there any evidence uh, right now that initi initiatives such as I-14Y are helping to attract, encourage, and help new entrants into Europe's open RAN ecosystem? Yes, so it was one of the core motivations to set up I-14Y that we want to lower the, the market entry barrier for small and medium companies and also for no, new players in the market. Associated to the setup of the I-14Y lab, the ministry who is supporting our lab, they set up all the call for SMEs. And we really, no, they really got uh, a lot of answers and applications. So, and now we are in the phase to set up a collaboration with the different SMEs or consortium of SMEs uh, who want to utilize the I-14Y lab. So from the perspective, yes, all those SMEs need this kind of lab. And with this specific setup supported by the ministry, uh, we also contribute to the ecosystem. And uh, let me add one point concerning the topic. So there are a couple of SMEs dealing with energy efficiency, working on the question how to improve energy efficiency. Others are working on uh, AI for utilizing uh, the, the, the RIC. And there are also companies dealing with components for uh, antennas, more addressing the area of uh, campus networks, but for the entire ecosystem, it is important that we, we see that development. And looking back to Mobile World Congress, we also saw a lot of new companies addressing the needs of, uh, of uh, Open Run. So my answer is yes, uh, these uh, labs like the I-14Y lab uh, can help the ecosystem to, gr to grow and to become faster. Okay, oh, that's really encouraging to hear that there are, are new entrants uh, coming on board and getting involved uh, in the ecosystem. Um, so we're about sort of a, a third of the way through the year now. Uh, what are the key goals for 2023 at I-14Y? Yeah, key goals of uh, I-14Y for 2023. So. As I've mentioned, the most important goal for us is to develop this end-to-end -end setup. So to make sure that we find an agreement between the different operators, Telefonica, Vodafone, and DT, to, uh, to agree on the uh, test scenario we want to implement, to implement the test scenario, to bring it to a high level of automation so that we easily can change components and uh, uh, release certificates or batches. And certification indeed is the, the second goal of the lab. So we want to work with Orion Alliance and TIP to develop the current batches further to a kind of certificate which has a more or a higher meaning for the industry in the sense that they may even use it, they means the operators may even use it for their RFIs and RFQ process as a, one of the conditions. We are not there yet, but uh, in order to simplify the process, it's important to, to develop those um, certificates. 
And Andreas, will there be any new ways for companies to engage with I-14Y Lab in the future? Yeah, absolutely. So I mentioned already the continuation of the plug fest, which is a little bit like event-driven testing. So we want to develop the permanent test setup, but especially if we think about how we can support SMEs, there's another format we, we want to establish and that is on-demand testing. So based on the requirements of such an SME, we can adapt the, the lab and utilize the lab for specific tests that are necessary for these companies. And uh, what we have learned from the discussion with the SMEs that is uh, uh, really needed to help them to support, uh, to help them to develop the uh, open run components. And it is a little bit uh, a complementary approach to the regular permanent test setup. Um, so you, you mentioned earlier, there's a, a current uh, a plug fest underway uh, at the moment, the spring plug fest. Um, uh, what's next in terms of I-14Y's involvement in uh, such uh, testing processes? And uh, will there be more of these during the course of 2023? Yeah, absolutely. We will uh, apply for these, the autumn's plug fest uh, as well. We are currently working on the question what will be the the most important topics for the autumn's plug fest i would expect we will continue with focus and uh, on rick and x apps but uh, it has to be a decision of the consortium so we will see what else will be proposed by the partners presumably we'll continue with the the end-to-end -end test sets up test setup as well so uh, it's too early to answer the the specific topics but Definitely, we will uh, continue with the uh, autumn plug fest. Okay, excellent. Well, you know, there's a lot of buzz, uh, a lot of activity around uh, Open RAN uh, in 2023, but it's still early days, uh, and these kind of initiatives are, are really important to move the industry on. So, uh, Andreas, thanks very much for your insights today and bringing us up to date with the i14y lab and i look forward to catching up again later in the year to find out how things are developing thanks very much thank you